back at my favorite place in the world today, the garage, and I'm gonna be putting the crank in, so here we go. I'm about to start putting the crank in. Um, I basically got everything organized over here. I got the girdle, I got all of the main studs. I actually took them out because I like to um, evenly apply the uh, anaerobic sealer without the studs being there because they kind of get in the way. I got all the nuts, all the washers. Um, I have the torque sheet over here. So this says the sequence I need to torque them in and their appropriate torque spec. Um, and then I still got the crank over there. I'm going to clean that off. Um, basically, I'm going to get started and I'm going to start putting on the sealer, put in all the studs, uh, get the bearings in, get the sealer on here, get the bearings in here, get everything lubed up. I'll get that crank cleaned off too. And then I can drop her in and start torquing everything down. So here we go, folks. Also forgot to put my oil, oil squirters in, so I'm gonna do that right now. sealer on um, which you can see why I wanted to put this on before I put the studs on because it's a huge pain to get the roller around and get it very evenly distributed distributed uh, I'm gonna put on some ARP fastener lube I'm gonna put this on all the threads and then I'm also gonna put it on the bottom of the nuts um, and on the uh, any surface that the nut is touching on the block too on, on the girdle so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then once that is done um, I'm gonna go over to my girdle over there I'm gonna do uh, apply the same um, anaerobic sealer and then I can start putting the bearings in I can lube the bearings all up and then I can get the girdle kind of put in place um, and obviously the crank in too and then I can start getting um, together my torque sequence and everything I'm now going to go ahead and start installing the main bearings. I'm going to get the main bearings lubricated and I'm going to get the crankshaft dropped in. And then after that's done, um, I'm going to go over to my girdle over there and get that all situated. So these are what the, the uh, main bearings look like for the block side. You can see they have this, um, they basically have this little channel right here and these holes and that basically allows oil to be transferred um, from the mains to the um, rod journals. Um, and the main bearings are actually tanged on these motors. Um, so you actually can install these on the top and vice versa because the tanks are in opposite uh, directions. Um, so this is cylinder number one, as we can see here, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and then five is the thrust and then six. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. Um, I already wiped these down and everything, so they are nice and clean. And then this is the thrust bearing. You can see it has the holes in the channel and everything. I'm just using Permatex Ultra Slick Lubrication. 
how about this is like 10 bucks off Amazon. So what I use in all my engine builds, it works out really well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice liberal amount of lubrication on the bearings here. So I got the block covered up for now because I'm going to start working on the girdle. I'm going to get the uh, sealant installed on here and then I'm going to put the bearings in. Uh, you can see these bearings are just flat, right? There's no little in, there's no little groove for the oil because the lubrication on the rod journals only happens uh, when the oiling hole is passing um, on, on the block side. And got my sealant over here. So I'm going to start putting this on. want to make sure to get a good um, layer here because this is where actually all your oil is traveling. So any leaks out of here is oil pressure you're losing. So you can see this is absorbing a lot of it, um, which is why I'm probably going to put on another coat after this. So I got the girdle uh, situated. Um, there's still a gap between the girdle and the block, so the anaerobic sealer isn't gonna dry now. But basically what I wanna start doing is I wanna um, get all these nuts and washers and I wanna lubricate both sides with the ARP uh, fastener lube. And then I wanna start hand tightening them down and then I'll follow the torque sequence and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead and I applied ARP lube on all the uh, nuts, all the threads, all the washers, on every end of everything. Everything is properly lubed up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to torque the mains, which are M10 studs, to 30 foot-pounds. And that's the first step. <laughs> is all in and things are really spinning nicely no resistance no binding spins over real smoothly I can really feel that uh, ultra slick assembly lube doing its job keeping everything you know nice and slick um, it's not like engine oil where it just kind of spins it actually has you got to put a little bit of force into it and that's good because that's gonna stop oil from dripping down out of the bearings while I'm assembling the rest of the motor everything's torqued everything's marked everything's torqued to spec did have one little issue with this bolt over here loosening up and stripping out, um, but I did have a, uh, a spare. Um, you might have seen in the video when I was torquing this, I was torquing it, you might hear a little snap, and uh, it loosened up a little bit, but I was able to put a new one in there, um, and that's all good. So everything is all assembled now and is, is ready to uh, put the pistons in. I went ahead and I double, trip. actually, I think this is my third or fourth time checking all the gaps. So I did that, did that off camera. And uh, next video, we're gonna be putting the pistons in. And I cannot wait to put these guys in. These things are freaking gorgeous. Until next time, guys. Last small note, this is how you know the crankcase is sealed properly. When you see a little bit of excess oozing out, uh, excess anaerobic sealer oozing out into the crankcase. You'll see this going all the way around the perimeter on the inside, right? And also on the outside. This is how you know you're not gonna have any leaks out of the crankcase. And you can see I applied enough and I torqued everything down even enough so that the gasket uh, maker oozed out properly. Till next time when we put in the pistons. 
So I just wanted to do a short video clip to basically show you guys how I'm setting the uh, valve lash clearances on my cylinder head since I am doing a solid lifter conversion uh, from, a, from, from hydraulic lifters. Um, and basically what the valve lash clearance is, is it's the clearance between the bottom of the cam lobe, the flat part of the cam lobe, and uh, your, your solid lifter. And basically in order to do this, uh, my machine shop lent me this tool that they has and have, and basically what this does is it clamps the cam lobes down, or the cam journals down. Um, and basically what you do is as you're checking clearances, you know you can move this down uh, to whatever cylinder that you are checking. Um, so I am testing this exhaust one over here and I already have a bucket in here. It's a 15.86 millimeter bucket and I got this torqued down and everything. And so now, um, you know, this, this cam's not moving at all. It's pretty torqued down, it's, it's not gonna be moving. So I got my feeler gauge right here and the Volvo spec is a 0.4 millimeters on the exhaust side. So I'm going to get a 0.4 millimeter uh, feeler gauge. And as you can see, it is not going in at all. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do then is go down to a smaller one, the smaller one, so on, until I get one that slides with a little bit of friction. I already know the clearance on this one because I already did it. Um, it's a 0.35 millimeter gauge. And if you can see, that fits in there perfectly. Now, Volvo sells these buckets. They sell different bucket sizes in order to make up for your difference in a lash uh, versus spec. Um, and they come in 0 0.02 millimeter increments. So if I have a 15.86 millimeter bucket in here and I need 0 0.05 millimeter more clearance, I would need a 15.82 millimeter bucket. Now you're probably saying, well, that's only 0.4 millimeters more of clearance. Uh, you need 0 0.05 millimeters of clearance. But that's okay because the Volvo spec says that you can be 0 0.03 millimeters uh, either way, um, either bigger or smaller. So they give you a little bit of room, which is good. Um, and so I'm going to be setting the exhaust to 0.4 millimeters and the ex uh, intake to 0.2 millimeters. And the exhaust is bigger because the exhaust valves expand more because they see more heat. So just wanted to do a quick little overview of basically how I'm setting up my head uh, clearance-wise and everything.